We're at the um, Lincoln Davis Outboard Motor Museum in Waldeboro, Maine. And today we're going to talk about the history of the Indian Outboard and the predecessor to the Indian Outboard, the Hartford Sturdy Twin. And first we'll talk about how I came to be knowledgeable on this subject. I grew up in the Hartford, Connecticut area and, and um, became interested in old outboards uh, and <clears throat> joined the Antique Outboard Motor Club probably around 1970 or 71. And my early Antique Outboard mentor was Bob Zips of East Hartford. And Bob would invite me over as a young man to his place and look at old outboards. And one day, we were looking at some old outboards, and he, he went to an outboard that he had in his collection, and he said, say, Bill, look at this. Look at this outboard. Was it like the one you're on? Got your hands yeah, on like right now? Yeah, like this one. And it yeah. said, Gray and Pryor Machine Company, Hartford, Connecticut. And I said, well, I've never heard of any of that. But uh, Bob said, yeah, sure enough, outboard motors were made in Hartford, Connecticut by this company. And I said, well, that's really neat to see. And, you know, I, I, I came away from it and uh, thought about all that for a few days and said, I wonder if that company is even in business. So I pulled out a pre-internet days, of uh, actual Hartford, Connecticut phone book and looked it up. Sure enough, Grand Prior Machine Company, you know, whatever, uh, Windsor Street, Hartford, Connecticut. And I said, well... Maybe I should, maybe I should just go there and see, see what this is all about and what what they do or what they've done. So I, I got myself to the, to the company, which was a a great old brick, you know, turn of the 19th century brick, uh, you know, typical s small factory building, and on one side there was a a, a sign hung up that said, uh, Gray and Pryor Machine Company. I said, wow, this, this is the place. And it was a, a wood stairway going up to a wood door. And I walked up and opened the door and looked around and saw some, off in the distance, some you know, machinery and heard machine shop kinds of sounds. And the doorway in was like a little shipping receiving area. What was the, the machine sounds like? Men getting excited about something no. and swearing? No, or, there's no talking. No just talking machines at all. Running. Just machines running, right. okay. So, so the, the the guy in the shipping receiving area came up to me and asked me, you know, if he could if he could help me, and I said, well, I'm am doing a little research, and I found out that you know this company has been making engines and other products for many years, and I was looking to see if I could find out any other information about that, and he said, well, just come upstairs with me, and I'll, I'll have you meet some people that you might want to um, get to know. And uh, so we walked up these wood stairs and it opened out to a little office area that was very early 20th century. I mean, it had roll top desks, the oak oak ta <coughs> table, um, like a conference room table. And a, a, a fellow introduced himself to me and said, I'm um, Robert Gray. and." Um, president of, the, of this company and uh, I said well I you know I I found out that at some point your your company made outboard motors and he goes well yeah let me let me tell you all about that so that began the whole history now he was the one who did that study that you gave me yes. with the uh, yes. horsepower rating they yes. did the, in the tank for the engineering uh, project right that's the okay. thesis that I have a copy okay. of here so and that was the son right at yes. that time. yeah and so, that's the guy so you're the talking to that, that, um, you know, was the president of the company, it was Robert Gray Jr. And he was the son of the founder of the company. And this is what the company was making at the time that I visited in about 1972. What are they? It's a universal joint. Okay. So they made, um, you know, different okay. kinds. All right, now I can see it. And, yeah. um, um, and they had, you know, and then there's this odd hinged, uh, hinged gear joint um, that they made. And that's what they had uh, been making for, for many, many years. Now, to ask you one question, has this got anything to do with Gray Marine? 
Nothing. Nothing, nothing. at all. Not the same right. company at all. All right. right. Yep, very good. So the Gray and Pryor machine company was started, you know, turn of the 20th century, something like that. Um, Robert Gray Sr. was the business guy, and George Pryor Sr. Um, was the engineer and the inventor, and, and they started originally um, making um, inboard uh, marine engines. Um, Probably not too much for pictures, but uh, but uh, let's see what we have here. I should have been already. So that's the that's the company. Um, Does it look like that when you walked into it? Similar. Um, okay, but it was no. This was taken back in the. 20s. This was uh, 1916. Okay, when 1916. This was taken. That was before they were making outboard motors. Right, long before. Okay, so yeah. Just hang on, hang on, just a second. Okay, got it. Okay, okay. good. Okay, and this photo is the. Well, those are the st stairs that went up, and this is the shipping receiving area that uh, I first met the fellow um, at that door, the uh, shipping receiving guy. And okay. in 1916, you can see that it's still a shipping receiving area. Um, and some things in 1972 were still in place. Um, these um, screw machines um, were still there in that location. Were they being they, used? No. No. <laughs> and and um, I think there was one other. Yes. So this um, OD grinding machine was was still there when I went there in 1972. Being, still being used? Or not? Yeah, that was still in use. Okay. Not too often, but it was still in use. Get a little bit light off. It. There we yeah. go. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so that's how I came to um, know this company, and it was a very interesting event for me because uh, it was just so surprised that uh, here I walked into almost a museum, it's still functioning and still making money. And and then very soon after, I met George Pryor Jr. So Robert Gray Jr. was in charge of the business upstairs office area, and George Pryor was in charge of the uh, uh, the machine shop, the manufacturing. So these are the two the, sons. The two sons. And they were still wow, that's amazing. And, and they had great recollection of the company history. George Pryor still had. Um, the Pryor family Hartford Sturdy Twin. And so the story continues. There was one other very important person that I met upstairs, and his name was Bill Jewell. Bill Jewell started with the company in 1904, and he was still working there in 1972. Wow. Yeah, and God. very sharp, very good guy. He spent a lot of time with me explaining some of the company history and... Um, and they all remember the outboard quite well. Um, what what the company was faced with in in let's say the 1920s came along. Their great single and two cylinder um, marine engines, inboard marine engines, very much similar in, in view, like like the um, like the engine, the Faro, the Faro, in, in, in this uh, okay. inboard. Well, that was. You know, very much the technology of the day, yeah. And that's and that's what the Gray and Pryor Machine Company produced for many many years. Well, the twenties came <clears throat> came along, and that business started to slow down, and and that was change in culture. You know, the outboard motor got very popular in the nineteen twenties. I mean, starting with, of course, we've talked about the. Waterman coming in, you know, 19. Yeah, in a very short period of time, and, it was it was and more popular than baseball games. Uh, robot motor, and yeah. you know, it was it was yeah. kind of low technology boat engines for outboard motors for many years, but when the 20s came along, it became the aluminum age, and that's when aluminum really started getting used for as much as possible. So, so Gray and Pryor were faced with, what do we do now? Our business is going slowly and we need a different product. So George Pryor says, well, let's, let, outboard motors are hot right now. Let's design and build our own outboard motor for sale. And that's exactly what, what he did. And um, 
So, so to, just to end one part of the story, I ended up getting to know these guys really, really well. And um, at some point they asked me what I was doing. And I said, well, I'm just right now I'm just collecting historical information. They said, well, what are you doing for work? And I, I said, well, right now I'm uh, somewhat in between jobs. I had just finished my tool and die maker apprenticeship and I decided to move on to maybe some other opportunities. And they said, well, why don't you just come work here? And I said, well, that's not what, that wasn't my plan, but they were very insistent. They said, you know, you really should get to know us and come and, and, and work here. So I ended up getting a job at Gray and Pryor Machine Company is, uh, is what happened. And I got to know these people very, very, very well. And um, Did they give you free outboards? No, but they gave me some little odds and ends. And, and now I'm going to transition the history while we're talking about that away from Graham Pryor a little bit and to the Indian Silver Arrow. So in, in explaining the story um, from Robert Gray, and he had, you know, he talked about the outboard business, how they made, you know, a certain amount of outboards, and I can't exactly say for sure what, what their motivations were. But at some point, they um, made contact with the Indian Motorcycle Company. And Indian really showed an interest in wanting to diversify their motorcycle business and go into outboard motors. And what ended up happening